Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and we're gonna be talking about my personal thoughts on what's wrong with these smartphones of today. So let's get right into it. So again, disclaimer, I do wanna say these are my personal opinions. Obviously, these don't reflect everybody's thoughts, and if you have different opinions, I would love to hear your thoughts and everything in the comments section below. I always like hearing what other people think, uh, especially not just from my own, you know, Point of view. So I wrote down some things that I'm gonna go over in this video, kind of just things I've noticed over the at least the past two years, I would say. It's really escalated in the past two years versus before that. And it's just certain things that I've really noticed when it comes to the nowadays smartphones, what we expect, what we've been getting, and kind of what I've been seeing. And it's more of a never-ending cycle and it's just getting worse and worse. And I really hope that it does turn around in 2019 maybe not with all of the phone manufacturers, but hopefully with one or two of them to at least show that they still care about their consumer and not just about profits. So getting into it, the first thing and the most obvious thing that's been a huge change in the last two years when it comes to phones is the overall prices of these devices. So you've noticed that a lot of these phones now are costing anywhere from $500 all the way up to $1,200. So over $1,000 for a phone that fits in your pocket. And some people don't really care about this. They've been paying premium prices for devices for a while now, and I get that. But even five years ago, a premium cell phone was only about $700. That, that was like the top of the line was, was 700 bucks. And you can't come and tell me that seven years ago or five years ago that the economy was so much different that $700 was equal to $1,000 today. That's not true. So really it's been a huge incremental upgrade every year. And now, as if you've seen my video talking about the Samsung Galaxy S10, you would know that their prices are now gonna be $1,750 for the maximum phone or with the best specifications. And from my point of view, that's like, wow, I'm almost paying $2,000 for a cell phone. And it just, in my mind, it comes to an issue where I feel like in a year from now, or maybe even less, phones could very well go over $2,000 and then $3,000. You know, like, when is it going to stop? Where are we going to draw the line as consumers? We're just not going to pay that. The sad reality is people are still going to pay that $1,700 for a phone. I definitely am not going to. There's no way I could afford that for one. And second of all, even if I could afford it, there's no reason why I would pay that much. I would definitely buy the lower end model, which I think is going for $1,000. But that's still a ton of money. That's exactly what I paid for the Google Pixel 3, which I have here, the XL. And it's just getting ridiculous that so many phones are getting to this point. Because first Apple did it, everybody gave Apple crap, and then Samsung came out and did it with a $1,000 note, and now Google's doing it, all these companies are doing it. It's just gonna keep growing, and more companies are gonna keep jumping on that bandwagon because consumers are actually paying these ridiculous prices. And the funny thing is, other companies out there are still showing that it's possible to get the same specifications that you get from a, a nowadays cell phone, a very premium cell phone, put it in a device and sell it for a reasonable price. I'm talking about OnePlus. They have the OnePlus 6T. I did a full video review on that on my channel if you wanna go check it out. I loved that phone and it was an amazing device. I think it's by far one of the best phones that came out in 2018. And the funny thing is, it's for half the price of most of these flagship devices. Now. The OnePlus 6T is going for $530 for its minimum model, which comes at 128 gigabytes of internal storage. I know certain cell phone makers who have a 64 gigabyte variant and they're still selling that for more than $800. So it's one of those things like you can look down and look at the specifications, look at what's designing it and you're like, okay, I can understand this one's more money than this one because of this. But really it comes down to what the manufacturer wants to place that price on and a lot of it I think is paying for that brand name. It's becoming more of a fashion icon than it is an actual practicality reason for why the prices are going up. And again, that kind of comes down to what I was saying with the storage. So about five years ago, or even before that even, like when the iPhone first came out, right? You'd have a eight gigabyte model, a 16 gigabyte model, and then a 32 gigabyte model. They'd be increments pretty much about $100 difference in price and you're just getting different storage options. In reality, and then especially coming from somebody who knows how technology is made, changing the amount of storage inside of a phone, especially a computer or something like that, does not cost $100 to upgrade that much storage. Now, granted, it was a little bit different five plus years ago. You know, technology has definitely advanced in the past five years, but even today's standards, for sure. Going from 
32 gigabytes to 64 does not cost $100. Going from 64 to 128 does not cost $100. Going from 128 to 256 does not cost $100. Now, if you're jumping from 64 to 512 gigabytes, yes, I can agree that probably could cost $100 in difference of price when it comes to that much storage. But it's sad that these phones that are coming out with 64 gigabytes of minimum storage are still costing $1,000. And then a jump up to 128 gigabytes is another $100 or $200 or whatever. And I feel like that's too much, especially the starting price is already too much, but then asking for another hundred plus dollars just for more storage, kind of ridiculous. Especially when certain phones are coming out, like from Samsung that have expandable storage, because then you can go buy one of these guys. They're a little, they're a tiny little micro SD card that plugs into it. And there you go, you got more storage. And that has been proven to work. We can still do it. It's not old technology. It's just that cell phone makers know how much money they make off just bumping up the price for more storage because people will pay that. So that's why they haven't been implementing that in their newer phones in 2018 and going into next year. Another big thing is cloud storage. A lot of companies have their own cloud-based storage systems now. Google has Google Photos and Google Drive. iOS or Apple obviously has their iCloud and all that fun stuff. And then Verizon has their own cloud. I think T-Mobile has their own cloud. There's so many different cloud services out there nowadays. It's pretty remarkable. But the cool thing about them, and I know a lot of people are still on, on like the fence about it. They don't want to go to cloud storage because of security reasons. I totally get it. It's justifiable. But more and more people are moving towards it. They're getting used to it. They're putting their stuff into in the cloud. And the more and more these cloud systems grow, there's not enough reason to need internal storage on a phone. So that again should be another reason why they should lower the prices when it comes to upgrading storage on a device. I don't think it's still worth $100 for an extra 100 gigs of storage when all these cloud services are at the palm of our hands and a lot of them are for free. At least mo most of the space that we would need, you can get it for free. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing, cloud storage. I don't, know, I don't know why more companies, especially phone companies, aren't really worried about this taking over the internal storage market essentially. And another thing that's becoming a gripe for me is the overall cameras on the smartphones. So I swear every camera that comes out in 2018 or in the future for the new cell phones, they're all going to be good. I don't think you can really find a camera that's bad. It's still, it's funny that all these tech reviewers still come out and they say like this camera is terrible. Do not get this camera because it's bad compared to this other one. It's like, yeah, if you have a $500 phone compared to a thousand dollar phone, the $1,000 phone, I would hope, it probably has better optics and a better camera than the $500 phone, but that $500 phone still has an excellent camera for what it is. And it's one of those things that cameras, at least in 2018 or 2019, they're really not that big of a deal anymore because no matter what, they're gonna be a good for sharpness, they're gonna be good for color accuracy, and they're gonna be good for social media because you have to admit that's 90% of what people are using a cell phone camera for. I would never take out my cell phone and bring it with me to take a photo shoot with and use those pictures to, to frame one day. I'm not that kind of guy. And I really hope nobody else really is. I understand if it's one in a million chances where you don't have your main camera with you, you just got your cell phone and you wanna get a good picture or something, that's fine. But the thing is, every phone out there can do that nowadays. Even like the BlackBerry Key 2 has a really all right camera on it. But yet these tech reviewers come out and they bash it because it's worse than the Google Pixel or it's worse than the iPhone. It's like, okay, fine, it's worse, but does that mean it's a bad camera? No, it's meant to be a camera in a phone. It's not meant to replace your DSLR. Where I think a lot of these premium, premium phones are trying to do that. They're trying to make these cameras that take the place of your DSLR. When in reality, I don't think I'd ever see myself doing that maybe in the in the very far future when dslrs become the size of cell phones maybe then i would do that but for right now i don't really see the reason why people have to worry so much on camera quality or especially pay way way more money for a phone with an amazing camera when the rest of the phone whether it's the same as a really cheaper phone or it could be a lot worse it's just the camera's better and that was one of my gripes with the pixel 3 xl is that, yeah, the camera is amazing. The camera is great for a cell phone camera. It's it's amazing. But would I choose this phone over other phones just because of its camera? No, I wouldn't. Because the camera really isn't that big of a deal when it just comes to, I'm using this for social media purposes. I can use any phone 
with any camera for social media purposes and they all relatively will look the same after the image processing and all that stuff from the individual apps they're using so that's why in everyday use i would choose like the oneplus 6t because it's got the same if not better overall performance in everyday use but it's for half the price and yeah you don't have as good a camera but the camera is still decent and it's still definitely good enough so yeah cameras are definitely a big thing that's a gripe for me for all these newer phones coming out that i just think that if you wanted to justify the price for these new phones you're probably saying that the camera is the reason the price is getting so high just stop it just stop putting so much work into the cameras they don't need to be that good they don't need to cost that much money that's that's just my personal opinion when it comes to cell phone cameras and i really hope in the future, they go the route of OnePlus and have a very decent camera. Doesn't need to be the best, but at least a good camera so you can at least have a decent price. Another thing that people are worried about with newer phones is displays, and more importantly, the display quality, or I should say the resolution quality. And it's funny because a lot of these tech reviewers or people in the tech community like to shove a lot of tech jargon down average consumer throats. And what I mean by that is these are people that don't know about technology. They're not huge on specifications. They don't really pay attention to the what's new, and what's coming out, what's what's the best. And they really just want something that's gonna work for them, right? But these people like me that are in the tech community that actually look at the specifications and look at what I'm getting before buying it, we like to tell people about it. And I think when we talk to somebody that doesn't know a whole lot about TVs, displays, cell phones, you name it, and you talk to them about resolution, refresh rate, pixel density, anything like that, they're gonna get overwhelmed, and especially when it comes to cell phones. People will look at a phone next to each other, and they'll be like, okay, this one's a Quad HD display, 550 pixels per inch. The one next to it is a 1080p display. It's 480 pixels per inch. To the naked eye, you can't tell the difference. You can't. But when you see it on paper, you're like, wow, I want that 2K display. I want that Quad HD display. I want that because it looks better. It looks better. It's got better pictures everything will look better. I want it. It's way better. Now, for my personal opinion, I will take a 1080p display over a Quad HD display any day if A, it helps on performance, and B, on battery life. Those are two big hits that you get on phone with a Quad HD display that I don't think, in my opinion, is worth it. If you could get better battery life, especially if it's very noticeable, and especially performance, if the performance overall can be better using a 1080p display, I'm going to choose that on a cell phone any day. Because, again, on a cell phone with a screen this size, you cannot see with the naked eye a difference. Or if you do see a difference, it's very, very minuscule. The only thing I'll agree with is the difference between LED or LCDs and OLEDs. So when you get an OLED display, that uses a lot of different technology when it comes to the darks or the blacks that actually turn off the individual LEDs behind the display. Where on an LCD, they're still glowing essentially and the, the darks don't look as rich and the colors don't look as poppy or saturated either. So I'd say the best alternative is a 1080p OLED. That should be like the definitive screen for all cell phones. Until somehow in the future we can make a display that's, let's say it's better resolution, that doesn't cut on battery life and it doesn't cut on performance. Because for right now, I'm not saying that these phones are slow or that, that the battery life is terrible, but I know that it could be a lot better if they just didn't waste all this money on a higher resolution display to put in a phone for 2018, 2019. It's just something that I feel doesn't need to be there. 1080p displays are still beautiful. Again, the OnePlus 6T has proven this. The the that 1080p display looked beautiful, and honestly, in everyday use, I didn't notice a huge difference between that and the Pixel 3 XL. And in most cases, it was brighter as well. This one's a pretty dim display. So there's a lot of things that come into factors when it comes to displays with cell phones, and that's definitely something I want all manufacturers to take a look at or consideration with when making a new device. Another thing is software. I think software is another thing that needs to take more in consideration when it comes to cell phones. Obviously hardware is a big thing that's been 90% of this video so far is the hardware, but software is another big issue. I feel like so many of these manufacturers are going out of the way to create their own unique version of Android software. And I know I'm not talking about iOS, I'm not talking about iPhones because we all know iOS works great, it's fluid, it's a very good software, but with Android, I feel the ultimate or the best version of Android is just vanilla Android. The stock, no bloatware, no gimmicks, just the stock Android is the best Android. Like again, like we saw on the OnePlus 6T, as well as on the Google Pixel 3 XL, 
These are the best versions of Android in my opinion because there's nothing gimmicky or, or flashy or in your way or running down the system. It's all just vanilla Android. That's the way it should be. I don't know why so many of these companies still try to add so many extra gimmicks and features to the software to really, I guess, make it look better or make it more unique compared to the other phone to go and buy this one. I don't think that's really needed. I think vanilla Android should be on every smartphone. And then maybe in the app store or something, you could have your own launcher that people could pay for if they want those features. I think that'd be a better idea than just to shove it in their throat on the people who bought your phone because they bought your phone. I just feel like that's really stupid. So overall, I think software should just be vanilla Android on every phone, and then you can customize it the way you want to down the road. That's just my personal opinion on that. And lastly, one of the biggest issues with smartphones in today's age is just an oversaturated market. There's so many different manufacturers, even I can't really keep up with it. They're just coming out of nowhere from China, Indonesia, America, so many different countries making so many different phones that it's just getting overwhelming. And the thing is, yes, they're all running Android, and it kind of goes back to my software thing, but in reality, they're, they're getting so much different that it's kind of mind-boggling. And then it kind of comes down to which carrier does each phone work for? And now there's specific phones for specific carriers, especially in the US. And it sucks because as a consumer, you have to choose now between your carrier and which phone you wanna get. You can't just buy that phone and use it with any carrier you want, unless you somehow get an unlocked version of it or hoping that the manufacturer makes an unlocked version that they can use with any of the towers in the US. But overall, it's just oversaturation. It's when you get too much of something, it definitely can be too much of a good thing and it can be mind boggling for people. They don't know what to choose. There's too much out there. And there's too many little tiny things that are different on every single phone that become an annoyance. I can't tell you how many times I've had a phone where I'm like, this could have been the perfect smartphone if it wasn't for one or two things. I don't know why there's so many phones that come out where like this one does this thing extremely well. This one does this thing extremely well. Why can't they just become one phone and do that one thing perfectly and then it would be a perfect phone. But no, they, they just have to fight each other. They branch out from each other, create their own company, make a whole new phone, try to fight this phone. And in the end, it just becomes all gibberish and all these phones that just get thrown at the consumers and we don't know what to choose anymore. I guess that's why it gives us something to do, you know, because we can go out and look at the phones. We can show you guys what you should buy, what you should look out for. And I get that. But at the same time, if we just had a world that I guess if all the Android phones worked like iPhones where or worked like Apple, I should say, where they only have three or four different versions of an iPhone and we only had three or four different versions of an Android phone, it'd be a much simpler and more. I guess, understandable world for smartphones. It would make more sense in my opinion. Instead of having all these different variations from different companies and you just don't know what to go with. I don't know, it's 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 hard to say because you could go back on that. Your argument could be, well, I like different things. I like having all these different choices. I like having variety and that's fine. That's totally understandable, I get that point. But I personally think it would make more sense, especially from like a carrier perspective, like Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T, to have just a select four or five phones in the Android market to sell. That makes more sense to me. And I think if all these companies could just come together and work together, they could make an absolutely amazing phone and not have to fight so much when it comes to, again, price and overall availability. Because I know when like the OnePlus came out, the availability was hard to get. And then especially like when the Google Pixels came out, the price was the issue. And it's just, all of it's just growing and growing, getting worse and worse, I think in the next, I'm really honestly a little bit afraid for 2019 because of how much stuff has been changing, both technology wise and just overall consumer wise of like what we've been purchasing as consumers. So I don't know, I'm just kind of scared for 2019. I think that overall, I think the prices of phones are just gonna skyrocket. I think overall sales for phones are gonna go down. I think people are gonna start going back to only having a phone for two years before upgrading because I know a lot of people have been shifting, especially myself, have been shifting from going with a phone for maybe six months to a year at the most and then getting a new phone. It's, it's, it's becoming pretty ridiculous how, people, how fast people switch phones, but I honestly feel because of these price issues, we're probably gonna be going back in time now. We're gonna be going back to having a phone for two to three years before we try to swap them out. So that's it guys. I just really wanted to get this off my chest. I rambled a little bit, but I really wanted to talk about what my personal thoughts were on this whole new world of smartphones and what's happening with them. I would love to hear again your guys' thoughts and opinions on it. 
leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know you know your thoughts on it or if you're totally against my opinions i totally understand i just want to hear what you guys think so that's pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching my video leave a like to show your support as always subscribe if you haven't already and i hope to see you guys in the next one peace